Noreen. Yes? What would you like to do this weekend? Go flying? That's a great idea. I actually had a really good idea. You know the two guys we met up at Johnson Creek that have the private airstrip up in Star Valley, Wyoming? The Heiners? Mark. Yeah, Mark and Galen. Uh-huh. They invited us up. I think we ought to go up there. Mark says he can get us a tour of the Husky factory. And it's really close to the Snake River. I think we can go river rafting. That's where it is? It's up there at the Husky factory? Yeah, right there next to the airport. Are you going to sleep in that again? Are we? Adventures on the Fly is brought to you in part by Kershaw Knives, the knife you'll be proud to carry. Plug into the sun with Solio Solar Chargers. Fly smarter with AOPA's FlyQ EFB. Learn to fly at the largest aviation academy in the West, UBU's School of Aviation Sciences. Technologically advanced, intelligently designed, David Clark headsets. have a great adventure planned for this weekend, don't we, honey? Yes, we do. What are we doing? We're flying to Wyoming. Have you ever flown to Wyoming? I've driven to Wyoming. I've flown to Wyoming, but not this part. This is the really pretty part. This is the western edge. We're going to Star Valley, which is where Afton is. It's just below Jackson Hole, which is just below Yellowstone. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to tour the factory of one of the most popular backcountry airplanes, the Aviat Husky. Do they make Husky men? They might. I look sure forward to it. That work there. Okay. I have to keep my eye on you. <laughs> and we're going to do some other things. We might go whitewater rafting. We might go look at a castle that's up there. Do they have knights in shining armor? I'll be there. That will do. <laughs> and there's a few other things we might go do. So um, this is truly an adventure on the fly because we don't know what we're going to do all the way yet. But the weather is looking great. The plane is packed. Chuck is ready to roll. So I say let's go. Let's do it. Do it, do it! Time to roll, honey. Off to Wyoming. Wyoming, here we come! A private airstrip in Wyoming. A private grass airstrip in Wyoming. Ooh la la. I know, very, very exciting. We met these guys a couple weeks ago at Johnson Creek. They're very cool. They invited us up there to go hang out at their private airstrip. Spire 4 traffic, Cessna 0 Sierra Bravo, rolling on 1 2. You excited? Very excited, hello! You know what they say about Wyoming? That it sucks? <laughs> That's what people in Utah say. That it blows. That it blows, yeah, those people in Wyoming say. They have wind socks there for the, you know, for the airplane. And they're just chains. They're just big, thick chains. And if they're hanging down, then there's something wrong. If they're sticking out a little bit, then the wind's slightly blowing. If they're sticking out straight, then it's then you got a good breeze. landed at the Municipal Airport, and Mark Heiner is the uh, airport manager or the FBO manager. Well, I guess I'm not really sure what he is. We'll have to ask him. He's the man. The man over here. So we're going to stop at Afton Municipal Airport, and this is also where the Husky Factory is. And we're going to get a tour of the Husky Factory and take a look at one of the, you know, premier backcountry airplanes being built. Maybe we'll take one home. Oh, I hope so. That would be nice if they gave us one of those. We're on the ramp at Afton, and we just found out that we could taxi the airplane directly to the Husky factory. 
Why would you drive there when you could just taxi there, honey? It doesn't make any sense. I think we should just taxi. Oh, we're going to just taxi. We're, we're going right now. Now, there is a gate we have to go through, but we got the code. And so we're going to taxi right over to the Husky factory and take a look at how they built them. Apparently, they built everything there from the ground up other than, you know, the engine and a couple of parts that you have to order in, like wheels and whatnot. But I'm pretty excited. I wish we had, like, a taxi slab that we could put on the side of the plane. And look, I'm going to start our tab right now, see how much it would be from here to there. I think it might be a misunderstanding the word taxi here. It's not a taxi service, we're just moving the airplane on the ground. But I like mine better. You should get a yellow sign on top. Taxi! We're going to actually uh, take this one home. Chuck's going to fly it. And uh, actually he'll probably look a lot like the guys at the air shows. We're inside the Husky factory, right at the finishing area. Right. Your name is Kelly, you're the manager. Correct. This is just exciting for me, right? Nareem's never really seen airplanes built before. I've seen some of it. I can't thank you guys enough for, for showing us how you guys build one of the premier backcountry airplanes in the world. We enjoy showing people our Husky and our products. Well, I can see why. Now, this one is almost done. This one is needs landing gear covers put on it, but other than that, it's ready for test flight. So it's about to roll out the factory door. You're probably not going to let me test fly it. Uh, I'm afraid not. We, <sighs> they don't even let me test fly them, so. Well, we're going to go through the factory. You're going to show us some of the different steps on how you guys build these things from, from, from nothing by hand. Right. right. Everything is manufactured here with the exception of the avionics, the engine, the propeller. That's but amazing. Everything else is actually done here right from scratch. And they're lightweight, they're covered in fabric, which is a dying art, by the way. Right. And so I'm really excited to see how that all happens. And we just, we're here at the Husky factory. We're going to have a great time. They are beautiful inside. They have wood panel flooring. The uh, wood is teak, okay. so it's got a different look to it. I've got carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how much I'm geeking out over this tour. Aviat makes one of the most widely recognizable airplanes in or out of the backcountry. Their paint job is really neat too. I love how distinct it is. And I'm pretty sure that Chuck is wishing that he was a Husky right now. We're in the fabrication area of the Aviat factory and they're a little slow today, so they put me to work. Got my crescent wrench and a hunk of metal. I'm gonna build me an airplane. So, uh, come back a little bit later, I'll show you what I got. I don't even know what to do with this. This is a Husky frame. And what you may or may not know is that they had to weld all of these little pieces on individually. Isn't that crazy? And they're gonna spray it down and move it to the next step. But this is the frame. Amazing. What we have here is a wing on a jig. And it's to the point where it's mostly done, so now they're gonna start wrapping it in fabric, and it's on this jig so they can rotate it around. But if you look at these ribs here, this is what's holding you in the air as you're flying around. And these are just little thin pieces of aluminum. So just, you know, the next time I go land on a really rough strip, I'm gonna remind myself to just be a little bit more soft with my landing, because, um, you know, it doesn't look real strong, but they, they really do hold an incredible amount of weight because of all the engineering behind it. This is really cool to see it in this form. That's really cool. Here, these are the wing tips. These are the forms for the wing tips. And so what they're gonna do, they make them out of fiberglass. And so they get the fiberglass and they lay it in as a layer, then they put the magic mixture on it, some sort of acetone, I don't know what it is. And then they put another layer in, and then they put the mixture on it, and it comes out in the shape of the, of the wing edge, the wing tip. It's all made out of fiberglass, and these are the forms. I think these are the ones for the Husky. Great. One of the other things they do here at the factory at Aviat here in Afton, Wyoming, is they build these Pitts Special S2s. This is an S2B, I believe, that was uh, being repaired. But these are fully aerobatic planes, so when you go to an air show, these are the guys you see doing all the flips and loops and smoke coming out and doing all sorts of things. We're gonna actually uh, take this one home. Chuck's gonna fly it. And uh, actually, he'll probably look a lot like the guys at the air shows. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all over the place. No, but what an amazing little plane. I, I didn't realize how short the wings are, but these things can do just incredible aerobatics. And that's right here at the factory at Avion. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of these airplanes, especially the Huskies, are all covered in fabric. 
So what we've got here is we've got a frame that we saw earlier, different frame, but now this is in the fabric wrapping process, so they've got it covered in what's called seconite, and they'll actually heat it up to shrink it down to form, and then they're gonna put, I think it's called dope. It's not what you're thinking, it's just a mixture of adhesive gluey stuff, I don't know what it is, and you have to do lots and lots of layers, and it comes out smooth, and you look at it and you swear it's metal that's been painted, but it's not, it's fabric. And this is a real, a real art to do this. You can't, I can't do this. I would mess it up. It takes a lot of skill to put fabric on an airplane and have it come out smooth with no wrinkles. And it's a real talent. When they say they make these, they make these planes. <laughs> yes, they do. There's a bunch of clothespins on this end to hold it on. I think it's just cool. It is. It's just, it's covered in fabric. Okay, what are you doing? Um, right now I'm going to hook up the cabin air controller, uh, and uh, it's got a um, it's got a little cable here on the inside, so that way the pilot can get fresh air. That's our only means of fresh air in this. Besides, you can fly with the doors open, the door open, and the window open. Mm -hmm. Okay, this dog has the worst gas ever. <laughs> And last night, we, we gave him some pepperoni cheese sticks. Uh -huh. Three times in the plane, we were just dying on the way up here. So I would be using this a lot. So go ahead and keep telling me about it and how to use it because, yeah, that yeah, would be something I would need. There's a cable right here that we use. Uh -huh. We also have the air, a, heated, a heated air box in here that's running with the control cable out here. It's mm -hmm. attached to the cable. But yeah, the window opens up nice and big, both the front and the back. And then this is a... Uh, Door. This one opens up, you can fly with it open. Nice. These two sets here. So you have lots of open space for, nice. for puppies with yeah. puppies with gas. With gas. <laughs> we still need to come up with like gas X for dogs. Yes. I for have this to one. Down. Ugh! <laughs> so terrible. So we got two different frames here. What's going on? Right. So this one here just barely came from our paint department. Okay. And he's fitting the panels, all the aluminum panels. Which are basically which from the basically forward of the, that from the tail. Everything has been painted forward. Okay. Everything that's been painted on that is covered in fabric. Gotcha. And this one's a little farther in the process. This one is just a day or two further in the process. They put on the landing gear. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the bungee system there. They haven't got the shocks on that one yet, but they'll okay. actually have shocks put into it. So we go from um, here, what happens next? Do we mount the engine next? They'll mount, they'll mount the engine, start putting all the radios in it. Gotcha. Um, basically get it ready to hang the wings. Oh, okay. And the wings are built separately on a different jig, the right? The wings are built separately. They come in basically one week behind the fuselage from the paint department. And they're already covered. They're already covered. And basically, already so it's just painted. attached, attach the bolts, attach the hoses from the fuel tanks and the lights and the wings, and that's, and Correct. the control cables. Correct. Uh, the, the cables are put in early in the process, so all that you have to do is take the ends and attach them. Right, you want to do that before you cover the yeah. wing. Yeah, why, yeah. why it's easy to get to. <laughs> what's, a, what's a good basic empty weight of a standard, standardly equipped uh, Husky coming off the line? Uh, empty weight, I think it's about 2,000 pounds. Okay, and your, uh, uh, and your gross weight limit your is? Your gross weight is, you can carry about 1,200 pounds useful load. Okay, so for people that don't know what that is, empty weight is without oil, I mean with oil, but without, without fuel, without no passengers, fuel. no. So, you, so when you do, uh, you, you add to your empty weight, you add your fuel, your passengers, and your cargo. Right. And that tells you how much stuff you're allowed to put in the airplane before it doesn't take off anymore. Right. Well, there's safety factors built in, right. but, but legally you can't put more than the, than the gross weight. And, and so the higher the number, the better the, the, uh, the more better, stuff you can carry. Yeah. And usually you'll run out of room before you run out of weight. Right, that's nice. My airplane's not the same. We'll run out of <laughs> weight before we run out of room. We're in the painting part of the factory here at Aviat, and Luana here is marking up this wing. It's, you can tell it's already been painted yellow as the base color, right? Right. And what else is going to happen here? Well, after the base color, then we decide which design goes on it. Okay. We lay it out with the tapes and then we will lay it out so that we can cover the paint that's already on as the so base color so what nothing colors go else here? can get on it. So what colors go in so here? So this will stay yellow. This will stay yellow. And then this little stripe here will be, or excuse me, this will be red in this area. Okay. In there. This will go red, this will stay yellow, and this little stripe will end up black. And then back to yellow? And then we'll be back to yellow, and then the same process up there in the center of the wing. And you were telling me that this is a pretty basic paint job. This is, yeah. Some of the other ones we've seen with the big swoops, that takes a lot of work. And it takes a lot of work. And it's back and forth a... to the paint shop and back, as you right. mark it out. And right. 
we just learned that in between the, the coats that go on the bear wings and then the paint, it can be 14 to 20 different coats of, right. of things on top of the wings. That's true. That is on a that lot of work. Blue, on the blue there, the, the basic on the uh, right. nitrate dope, there are three different cross, cross coats in that alone. Wow. And uh, then it just works up from there. But yes, on this particular one, it'll just be the yellow and the, the red and the black. Well, that's going to look really pretty. hope so. Well, you guys do a lot of work on this, and I can understand why these are such premier airplanes. Yeah. They love them. We have fun. I've been here 35 years. It's really? fun. Really? Well, that's so much cool. That is so cool. Well, thank you so much for just taking a little bit of time and showing us a little bit about how this happens. You're welcome. Anytime. Love to build you one. I'd love to have one. <laughs> The floor is to yeah, die we'll go, for. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave here with questions in it, sure. Should we put a teak floor on the bottom of our plate, honey? Yes. I wish. <laughs> Kelly, we cannot thank you enough for taking us through the Husky factory, the Avion factory, really, because we didn't just look at Huskies. We looked at the pits and everything, so this is just amazing to me. And seriously, I'm like a kid in a candy shop, honey. Yes, you are. She's going to have to pull me out of here kicking and screaming. But thank you so much, Huskies. If you're looking for a plane to do the type of flying we like to do, look into an Avion Husky. They're one of the premier planes out there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Behind us is the very first Husky ever built. They still fly it here at the factory. They use it to test different modifications and things like that. But the number one, serial number uno, Husky ever built. Ever and I think I'm gonna steal its tires. I know, check those puppies out. That's pretty, pretty husky. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so like what you did there. We were just at Aviat doing our little tour of the Husky Plains and Tina was working there and she has never been in a plane. Never she been flying <laughs> in a smaller plane. She works at a plane factory. Can you believe that? That's anyway. just plain embarrassing. <laughs> That's a joke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying that her grandson, who's about five, just kind of loves to sit in the planes and pretend like he's flying. And I asked, oh, well, where does he live? We'll go fly over him. Well, he's in Ogden, Utah, and we're in Wyoming, so maybe but the, not. But the least we can do now is fix the problem. So we're going to take you up for a little flight and then see if you enjoy it or not. That's great. Hopefully you will. <laughs> I know. I've been sitting there thinking, go, should I put my plastic bag in my back pocket? Uh, you won't have we'll to have one that. ready just in case, but hopefully you won't. <laughs> so we're going to go fly around. And here goes your very first uh -huh. flight in a small airplane. And here we go. I just want to take his words. Well, because they're his words. All right, let me hear it again. I'm Ryan McBean, and this is my job. This is... I'm Noreen McBean. <laughs> I'm Noreen McBean, and this is my job. I go on adventures on the fly. Yes, you do. Adventures on the fly. That's adventures our job. on the fly. This is my job to do adventures on the fly. I got a little bit up to it. Adventures on the fly. I'm sick now. I'm not even about to. Adventures on the fly <laughs> is what I do. And how I do it is with you. Oh, I love doing it with you. Flying with you. <laughs> we're married. Well, the other thing too, but that's not what we're, it's a family show. Yes. All right, we're lined up on the runway. We've got 20 degrees of flaps in. Looking pretty good for our approach speed. <laughs> Chuck you is are <laughs> soaking wet from our slobber dog. What am I gonna do? Look at my arm. Don't wipe, don't wipe it on me. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Go ahead and put his head out the window. Dry off. Is it right here we park? It's like a lovely parking spot. He says, come on down. <laughs> he really 
says he wants us to come. Faster, faster! I'm walking faster, on Faster, mama! Faster! Oh no! What is that? Oh wow. <laughs> Look at him, he's all smiling. He's like, uh huh, I know. <laughs> Right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we found our adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're kind of cheating on this trip, I think. Galen let us use his hanger. So we've got the 170 parked inside next to his really nice 185. It feels like we're lowering the property value a little bit. I think he's putting in, us in here to hide us. No, that's not a bad idea. Now, so uh, the airplane's gonna get some pampering, and we're gonna go exploring. Here we are at this beautiful landing strip. This is the Heiner airstrip. To get here, you fly to Athens, you go north, take a right at the castle. Very important to know. Seriously, there's a castle. And there it is, right here in this beautiful valley. We've got mountains behind us, this runway is perfect. We had such a great time here. I can't wait to see what else Wyoming has to offer. Matter of fact, we have some good plans, don't we? We do have good plans, but let's just take a moment. I think it's time to go play. Let's do it. Right. Been charging our Solio solar powered charger all day long. It's all the way up. I just checked this power, power setting on the back. I've got it set to charge the iPad, and we've been using Aopa's FlyQ all day long. So we're gonna close this up, open up the side port on the Solio, plug in the iPad. It's charging, and tomorrow morning we'll be ready to go. It's just that easy. We're out of Snake River. It's early in the morning, very just cold, and we're about to go river rafting. Unfortunately, Chuck can't go with us. It's a Forest Service rule. So we're going to be sands, chuck, but white water rafting, and they're letting a lot more water out of, the, out of the dam upstream because we're going to do some maintenance on it. So even though it's a little later in the season, the water's still pretty high, so we're pretty excited. There is never really been white water rafting before. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm nervous. And cold already. And cold. But we got a wet suit. We're going to go do it. It's going to be awesome. Take it out. Mary's going to get cold since so she brought her wet suit. We've had good experiences on the show with wet suits before. Once again, I don't have one. But this is actually very old one This is our, this is a triathlon one seat. So it actually fits her pretty good. She does need some money. Green is currently signing her life away. She says if she drowns or causes anyone else to drown or anything else like that that we won't sue you guys. After we sign our lives away, it's time for a little bit of instruction, and then it's time to get wet. Snake River has some really challenging but fun rapids. They have some weird names though, like Lunch Counter, Kahuna, Burrito. Just weird. I was getting really hungry by the end. The guide, awesome. But we also had a really neat group on our boat. That's usually not a good sign. I really have to start bringing my wetsuit. We did 
get in the water. Did I mention it was cold? It was cold. But besides that, the scenery was so gorgeous. I absolutely loved it. And before you know it, we're loading up the rafts and it's time to go. My least favorite part of the trip. Thanks to our guide right here, Ben. Down the Snake River, Mad River, uh, Mad River boat trips, right? Yeah, yeah, Mad River boat trips. Up at Jackson Hole. So if you want to do it, that's where you go. Thanks, All guys. Right. Yeah, we'll ride with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. These guys were a great crew. Lots of power. Really Lots strong. Of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very little grains, but yeah, very little scores, but we paddled like crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. What did you think about flying through the rain? That was pretty spooky. I know, but now we don't have to wash the plane. But we washed it before we went. And now it's extra clean, although it has water spots. 